Hello students, uh, so now we are going to start a mock interview for our student Jayanta M. Baruj and this interview is for ONGC and he is from chemistry background. So Jayanta, first of all, you introduce yourself. Sure, sir. But first of all, I would like to thank you for this opportunity. Well, I am Jayanta Mahathar Burwa and I belong to Sivsagar district in the state of Assam. I did my schooling and plus two from Sainik School, Gualpara, where I actively participated in NCC athletics and sports. I did my graduation in 2019 from Sipsagar College under the affiliation of Dibrugar University. I completed my post-graduation from Tejpur University in the year 2021. Throughout the entire course of my undergraduation, I was a recipient of UGC's Ishan Uday Special Scholarship Scheme. Also, during my undergraduation, I was able to complete a theoretical project under the National Initiative on Undergraduate Science conducted by TIFR Mumbai. In 2020, I was selected for a summer fellowship in ISCS Kolkata uh, by the Indian Academy of Sciences, although I couldn't complete the project because of COVID-19 lockdown. In 2022, I was able to qualify for GATE as well as CSIR Net Junior Research Fellowship. Uh, sir, I'm a firm believer that energy security is very crucial for a nation's socio-economic development, which is why I'm particularly interested to work for ONGC and I wish to see myself as a part of the community of energy soldiers. Thank you. Okay, Jayanta. So you are having uh, MSc in chemistry, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So why did not you join PhD after MST, MSc? Sir, um, honestly, at this point of time, I'm uh, not as passionate about pursuing a career in academia and research as I am about working in industry. At this point of time, I am... Uh, more inclined to work and learn about how things are operated on an industrial scale, uh, start a professional career while sticking to the application of my subject knowledge. Okay. So when did you uh, know about this uh, ONGC recruitment uh, that uh, there is a need of chemistry uh, uh, postgraduates? Uh, so I came to know about uh, that ONGC recruits through GATE in the post of chemist. Uh, I came to know about this uh, in my undergraduation. And also, sir, ONGC has been actively managing its operations in my native place for the past many decades. And uh, I have grown up observing ONGCians around me, and I have also heard a lot of good things about ONGC from my seniors who are currently working over there. And um, through their lives, I have come to know about the exemplary so governance practices. Uh, have you decided to work on particular location of ONGC if you are selected? No, sir. Okay. I'll and do you know the... Uh, uh, work culture, how ONGC works. Uh, that is, for 14 days, you have to stay in uh, on some uh, location of ONGC, okay, and you are disconnected from rest of the family for that duration. And uh, so, are you ready to uh, take that opportunity or that challenge? Definitely, sir. I think it will be a good adventure for me. So, when for 14 days you will stay at your home or any place you like, what will you do during those 14 days? So one thing is I'll definitely have to manage my job responsibilities. That is my first, that would be my first priority. And beside my job responsibilities, I will, ter, uh, I will try to uh, indulge myself in some productive work and uh, such as reading, uh, reading books. And uh, I like to watch movies, especially nonfiction and historical dramas. So I think I'll spend my time doing something that uh, through which I can do something productive uh, with my skills and in life in general. Something productive. So what productive? You said you will watch movies. So to watch movies is something productive. Uh, sir, I think so. Because uh, in, uh, the, I think that movies are productive if uh, these movies are informative and uh, uh, um, I especially like non-fictional movies. For example, I recently watched a movie uh, named The Big Short, which is about the 2008 financial crisis. And after watching that movies, I have developed some interest in economics and the share market. So I think that has helped me in uh, towards learning and it has helped me and it has pushed me towards learning uh, new things and developing new skills. So you have started investing in share market? Yes, sir, I have. I also okay. own sir, five shares of ONGC. As so a what product. are the different uh, options uh, for investing in share market? How we can invest? So one can directly buy shares 
for a company. And other way is, is through equity mutual funds. And uh, these are the two primary ways through which an individual, uh, a retail investor like myself, uh, can invest in the share market. So do you know the price of a uh, share of ONGC right now? The, the last time I checked, uh, it was 153 rupees. Okay, so during last one year, how is it varying? Can you draw that graph? Uh, sir, uh, so it has been a little topsy-turvy. Uh, in the 2000, uh, up until 2020, March 2020, ONGC was performing good. Then uh, after the COVID-19 uh, COVID pandemic, like all companies, ONGC's business uh, had to take us uh, take a fall, just a little bit, uh, just for a little bit of time. Then then it bounced back, and um, uh, currently ONGC, uh, when I bought the shares, it was at one sixty five rupees. Currently ONGC is at one fifty three. So I think um, ONGC has been going through some ups and downs lately, in the past one year. Okay, uh, tell me who is your role model in life. Um, I would say my father. Why? And, uh, uh, sir, my, uh, I've grown up observing uh, my father and uh, he's a patient man. And that is uh, the most, uh, there, is the, there is one quality that I admire the most of him. And uh, secondly, uh, he has a strong sense of responsibility. Uh, these are the two things that I tried, uh, that I have always tried to inculcate in myself, uh, which I have been inspired, uh, inspired from my father. Okay, so do you know about some investment made by ONGC outside India? Uh, yes, sir. Tell us. Sir, ONGC has a business on foreign soil, which is uh, looked after by its overseas arm um, and wholly owned subsidiary ONGC Videsh Limited. So currently ONGC Videsh Limited has 35 projects in 15 different countries. Uh, these, pro these countries are uh, they start from Bangladesh and Myanmar and uh, throughout the Middle East, they have projects in Russia, Azerbaijan, UAE, uh, the uh, Saudi Arabia, and um, also in Venezuela, in uh, South Sudan, and, and there are a few more countries. Recently, sir, ONGC Videsh Limited was in the news for the discovery of Farzad B gas fields in the Iranian coast. So do you know uh, there is a dispute between Azerbaijan and one more country? Yes, sir. So what is the name of that another country? Sir, Armenia. Okay, so what is the dispute? Any information about that? Uh, sir, if I'm not wrong, it's about uh, a piece of land, which is currently at, uh, which is currently in the uh, border, uh, in between the border area between Azerbaijan and Armenia. And uh, for which- So which one is uh, more friendly to India? Sir, Armenia. Okay. India has been supplying Armenia with missile systems. Lately. Okay. Okay. Okay, Raman sir. Okay, Jayanta. Hello, sir. Hello. You said that you are working in an industry. Yes, sir. On contract. Which type business. of industry you are working? Sir, I used to work in Olida Limited, but my contract ended uh, in the last week. What is your job role there? So I was working as an assistant operator in the chemical department, in drilling section. Uh, what are you doing there? So I was uh, working as an assistant operator in drilling. Okay. ONGC is a deal with the crude oil. Do you yes, understand sir. what this is a crude oil? Yes, sir. Can tell? Sir, crude oil, uh, it, uh, the crude oil is formed from the deposition of organic matter, uh, which have been depositing uh, for over uh, hundreds of years, and uh, they have been undergone uh, undergone tremendous amount of pressure. As a result of which, they convert into coal, crude oil, and natural gas. And uh, crude oil is basically a composition of a number of hydrocarbons, starting from aliphatic and aromatic, and uh, long even long chain hydrocarbons. ONGC is. Uh separating different products from the crude oil and selling in the market which products they are so primarily uh, it is uh, petrol diesel natural gas any other um sir naphtha what is this naphtha 
So naphtha, uh, I think it is a um, chemical mixture of aromatic hydrocarbons and some long chain hydrocarbons, uh, which is further uh, refined in refineries, but it is uh, considered as one of the products of uh, refining crude oil. Which physical parameters determines the quality of a fuels? Uh, uh, of a fuel, uh, crude oil or sir, uh, in general, crude petrol? Oil. Crude, crude oil. oil. Sir, uh, sir, I'm not sure, but it should be uh, the pore point of the crude oil. Pore point? Yes, sir. What is this pore point? Sir, pore point is is, sir uh, the pore point is the minimum temperature at which the crude oil remains flowable. It, uh, it flows. Sir, usually, the pore point is report uh, whatever the, uh, the experimentally found uh, temperature is. Generally, it is reported as uh, the temperature plus three degrees as a safety net. So, the experimentally found temperature plus three degrees is reported as the pore point of the crude oil. If the pore point of a crude oil is very less, then how it will affect the quality? So it will be uh, difficult for transportation of the crude oil through pipeline. Okay. Okay. Uh, what is the calorific values of the fuel? So calorific value uh, is the amount of energy that is released when a fuel is uh, when when a fuel is burned in presence of oxygen, it is reported in joule per kg. In market, the ONGC is selling the different type of grade oils. What do you understand by multi-grade oil? Uh, sir, a multi-grade oil is a type of uh, oil which is which can be used uh, over a wide range of temperature. Uh, it can um, it does not freeze even at low temperature or even at higher temperature, it does not lose uh, its viscosity and other properties. So that is why it can be used in a wide range of, uh, wide range of temperature and uh, different environmental conditions. Do you know the highest viscosity uh, of a multi-grade oil which the ONGC has been able to discover? Um, I'm sorry, sir. I do not know the answer to that. Okay. Uh, if we if we find if we have to find the presence of organic free radicals in a crude oil, then how we can find uh, organic free radicals? Um, um, I'm sorry, sir. At this point, I do not know the answer, but I will definitely look after uh, the topic after the interview ends. Okay. Now you want to be a chemist in a ONGC. Yes, sir. Do you know the, what is the role of a chemist? Yes, sir. sir. To my knowledge, a chemist has three primary job responsibilities. One is to assist drilling services by constantly monitoring and optimizing various properties of the drilling fluid. These properties are mainly uh, density, viscosity, API fluid loss, pH, etc. The second role is uh, yeah, uh, that a chemist can be a part of the surface team where the job is to uh, constantly check and monitor the properties of the crude oil being produced from wells. These checks may include laboratory tests uh, like uh, total sulfur content analysis, total uh, water content in the crude oil, the pore point, determination of pore point of the crude, etc. Now these checks are very important uh, because only uh, because only after that, the, these properties will determine the commercial value of the crude that is to be shipped to the downstream companies for refining. And third but not the least is uh, research and development where a chemist works uh, in collaboration with scientists, engineers, and experts from other domain to work on developing new technologies to enhance the current uh, AGNP operations, and also to work on existing and new areas of energy research. Okay, fine. You said that uh, you don't want to do a research further, but you want to serve the industry with your capabilities and your studies you have done. How your studies will be useful for the ONGC? So uh, during my master's thesis work, I have the, um, I have a specialization paper on catalysis, and I also have done a project work on. You have a, on the topic. Uh, which topic you have done the project work? So catalysis. Okay. Nanomaterial catalysis, sir. Okay, explain then. Further continue. And sir, 
Uh, currently, uh, to my knowledge, ONGC is trying to develop, and ONGC has been investing uh, in research and development to develop indigenous technology on green hydrogen technology. And uh, catalytic water splitting is a very efficient way to generate green hydrogen. So I think I can be, I, I can prove myself to be useful in that research. And although I do not have uh, the passion for research at this point of time, uh, even if I develop the interest for research in the, in the near future, I shall consider myself very lucky because ONGC has uh, state-of-the-art R&D facilities at various institutes. In the project, which nanocatalyst you have prepared? A certain oxide nanoparticles. And uh, you have to study its application also? Any application? Uh, sir, I was meant to study the application, but I couldn't complete uh, that part of the project because of a uh, sudden COVID-19 lockdown in 2021, in the late, later part of 2021. Okay. How you came to know that your the substance you have synthesized is a nanomaterial? How you have came to know about this? So for uh, for uh, this, we have characterization techniques uh, like scanning electron microscope, powder XRD for studying the crystalline nature. Then uh, there is a tunneling, uh, transmission electron microscope. Uh, through these analytical techniques, uh, I have determined uh, the particle size, uh, and I've come, I've been, I've come to the conclusion that it is uh, nanomaterial. Okay. What was your particle size at that time? Uh, so it was around uh, 40 nanometers. 40 nanometers. Yes, sir. Okay. So it was a, a range of, uh, but the average was 40 nanometers. Average is 40 nanometers. Yes, okay. XRD technique you have used to measure the, the crystalline nature of the nanoparticles, but it is not so much reliable technique XRD. So how will you further confirm the size? Any other technique you can remember this? So scanning electron microscope and transmission uh, and uh, transmission electron microscope. Okay. DL, DLS, you know what is DLS? Uh, sorry, sir. I do not know about it. Okay. Fine, fine. okay. It was good. Hanji, sir. Yes, sir. Provide feedback to him. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, Jayanta. It was a good interview. Thank you, sir. Okay, you answered it confidently. Okay. ES, ESR was a technique which is used to determine the organic free radicals. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, rest, do you, if you are saying about that you have done the project, then go the detail study about your project, what you have synthesized, where it can be used as a catalyst. And because at present time, the research is going on at a very large scale on the nanomaterials. Yes, sir. And you have also done your uh, thesis work on the nanomaterials. Yes. Think a green technology have been used in the nanomaterials for synthesize the metal and metallic oxides using different plants, bacteria, algae. So if you are saying about the project, then you should have good knowledge. The okay, rest, it was fine. It was a good interview. Your answer was also good. Thank you, sir. Hanji, sir, up to you. Okay, Jayanta. Yes, sir. So your performance is excellent. Thank you, sir. And according to my predictions, you have high chance of selection. Thank you, sir. So just perform in the same way you have done today. Sure, sir. Okay, and uh, feel very much confident. Thank you. And uh, revise more and more technical things. Uh, and uh, read whatever you can read about ONGC, its joint ventures, its subsidiaries, everything. But chance is high, okay? Okay, sir. So there was no negative point I observed today. Thank you, so sir. I wish you all the best. Thank you, sir.